You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Welcome to yet another brand new edition of the Wrestling Outsiders Podcast. Two nights in a row, baby. My name is Emerson Whitner, and tonight, all by myself again, I'm going to review SummerSlam. Thanks in part to the fun technical errors of Blog Talk Radio. Uh, make a long story short, now tonight we're being uh, streamed as well on AngryMarks.com, much like last night. Uh, but Blog Talk Radio is not working, the website's down, so we're unable to do the live show tonight. But you're listening to the soothing sounds of my voice. Uh, not sure when this is going to post. Hopefully by the end of tonight. Uh, Sunday night, so uh, you get to listen to me tomorrow. Yay! Um, and Brian's not going to be here. Uh, long, long story, not going to get into it, but Brian's not going to be here tonight. And so it's just me for the next 30 to 45 minutes talking SummerSlam, which was, well, last night as you're listening to the sound of my voice. Um, SummerSlam was an interesting show. Um, it, the, they went, uh, three hours, 45 minutes, and, uh, there were times it felt like it went three hours and 45 minutes. As a matter of fact, when they teased the count out in the main event, it felt like so long ago when they did the count out in the Dolph Ziggler-Rusev match. Uh, but, uh, let's get into all that here, starting at the beginning. Now, they did not bump any of the matches to the pre-show like expected, so we did get all 10 matches on the show. There was very little backstage stuff. This was all uh, this was a wrestling-based SummerSlam. John Stewart kicked off the show in the ring, much like Triple H did at TakeOver. He did a brief speech running down all the people we we're going to see tonight. As expected, Cena got booed. Lesnar got cheered wildly. Undertaker got a bit of a mixed reaction. Now, the story... Uh, the first half of the show was John Stewart was mad that uh, uh, Brock Lesnar broke the Undertaker's un uh, WrestleMania undefeated streak last year, and so he wanted to tell Brock how he felt. And to help tell Brock how he felt, he had some backup. Mick Foley. Uh, Mick came out. I should note that his beard has gotten long, uh, but he has had somebody trim it for him. So it didn't look uncanny, it didn't look shaggy. It just looked like a guy with a long beard. Uh, Mick, uh, the comedy of this was that uh, Mick only has one and a third ears, so he didn't quite hear John Stewart and thought that John needed help with The Rock uh, because John didn't uh, really stress the B. Uh, funny story that uh, in 2002, I didn't see that year's SummerSlam, and when I asked my friend who had won the main event, he told me Brock, but he also didn't stress the B. So for that whole day, I thought Rock had won until watching Raw. So anyway, John psyched up Mick Foley by talking about Hell in a Cell, how he got thrown off the top of the cage and stood up and fought some more. And Mick pointed out that was 17 years ago. And of all the places he's visited, he doesn't plan on visiting Suplex City. And really, that was it. They just stopped, and they walked to the back, and we went to the opening video package, and right into our first match, Sheamus versus Randy Orton, which just happened to be the same match that started Battleground. Um, this The fans were already starting in on the You Look Stupid chance. Um, Sheamus almost got RKO'd in the first 30 seconds, but blocked it, rolled outside of the ring, and told the fans on the microphone that he wasn't the one that looked stupid, they looked stupid. Uh, this match wasn't quite as good as their match at Battleground, I thought. And while Sheamus was on offense, the fans mostly entertained themselves by chanting uh, both You Look Stupid and the Olay song. Uh, when Orton was on offense, they did react to the match. At one point, Orton gave Sheamus a T-bone suplex over the top rope to the floor. Uh, Orton got uh, cut open over his eyebrow from punches to the head. Uh, Sheamus went to launch himself over the top rope at Orton, but Orton RKO'd him. It probably would have been the finish, but Sheamus rolled outside the ring. The actual finish saw Sheamus go for the bro kick, Orton sidestep it, and go for the RKO, but Sheamus shoved him off and surprisingly won with not one, 
but two road kicks. We got a fatal four-way for the tag team titles, the primetime players, the Colons, the Lucha Dragons, and the New Day. New Day came out singing the Jay-Z New York song, uh, but with different lyrics, talking about how they would win the tag team titles. Uh, the fans were doing dueling chants of New Day Rocks and New Day Sucks. Uh, last night, the same crowd was chanting Full Sail Sucks, but nope, they just stuck to the New Day this time. This was a one-fall match, um, not an elimination match. Uh, so Kofi and Big E at the beginning tried to take advantage of the rules by pinning each other, but that got quickly broken up. Uh, Kalisto looked really good here. He pulled out his no-hands, backhand spring elbow, which caused everyone who didn't see him in NXT to jump up in the air. Um, all four teams, as a matter of fact, got a chance to look good in the match, but the story was New Day kept tagging themselves into the match and kept most of the action on their side of the ring. Uh, they did get the heat on Darren Young, um, and when Darren made the hot tag to Titus, that's when everything broke down into a Pier 6 brawl. At one point, Sin Cara went for a missile drop kick. Actually, I wrote that wrong. Sin Cara went for a suicide dive, uh, but on the way out, Fernando drop kicked him in the head. Torito tried diving onto Xavier Woods, who kept interfering, but Xavier caught him and slammed him on the floor. Uh, but Xavier then got taken out by Darren Young. Darren then got taken out when Big E did his running spear through the ropes on him. We got the stacked up superplex. Um, Kofi tagged himself in, uh, tagging Titus. And after the stacked up superplex, Titus hit Clash of the Titus on Fernando. But he wasn't the legal man, so Kofi was able to dive in, pin Fernando. And yes, the New Day win the tag team titles for the second time. Dolph Ziggler versus Rusev. Lana's dropped the business suits and is now wearing denim. And her denim skirt this time had DZ written on it. And meanwhile, Summer, uh, Summer Rae was wearing the uh, Lana business suit, but it looked like she took a bedazzler to it before the start of the match. These two men worked at the speed of two men who had their time cut in half. Um, they still went like 12 minutes, but... Like, I don't know if they just had way too much stuff planned and decided to still do it anyway or what. But, uh, you know, Dolph took a really nice bump into the turnbuckles when Rusev stepped aside on a stinger splash. Uh, they actually were starting to go into the near falls at the four-minute mark, which made me think this match wasn't lasting long. Um, they, they ended up going, like I said, more than ten. Rusev had the match won with the super kick and the accolade. But he was distracted uh, when Lana slapped down Summer Rae outside the ring. Uh, Dolph rolled outside the ring and super kicked Rusev, but couldn't get back into the ring, so we got a double count out. Good match, bad finish, um, and actually one of the weakest matches on the show. Um, and then, of course, they had a post match brawl uh, that the baby faces were left standing at the end. Stephen Amell and Neville versus King Barrett and Stardust. The finish was the finish he expected, but how they got there was a little differently. Normally you'd expect, you know, the celebrity to get the hot tag and stand on the apron the whole time while they got the heat on the wrestler, but it was completely backwards. Um, they got the heat on Stephen Amell. Um, Amell looked good, you know, he took a lot of risks. You know, and a lot of, and any of these things, if they would have missed time just a little bit, he could have gotten injured and really hurt uh, the taping of his show. Um, but yeah, um, Neville at one point did the Phoenix Splash off of the middle rope um, and eventually deposited the duo outside. And Amel went to the top rope and did a big dive off the top rope onto the floor. He rolled Barrett back in and Neville pinned the king. With the red arrow. Uh, we then had one of the worst matches of the night. Uh, the Ryback, The Big Show, and The Miz. In a triple threat for the Intercontinental title. This match, I know wrestling is to a degree choreographed. But this match was probably the most choreographed match I had seen on a WWE show in a long time. Everything that they did, it seemed... It came off a little too pre-planned. Um, Miz was made an absolute joke out of this whole match, which made me think he was going to win. 
And I think a lot of people thought Miz was going to win because of that. Um, at one point, Ryback did give uh, Big Show the shell shock. But, you know, it's Big Show and everybody gives Big Show their moves. So nobody... So while people cared, uh, immediately, as soon as he hit the shell shock, uh, Miz ran in and gave Ryback the skull crushing finale. So he forgot about it. Um, he couldn't get the fall. He went for cover after cover on both men. And they kept kicking out. Ryback had Miz up for shell shock, but Cho gave him the knockout punch. Uh, tried uh, Miz tried to get the pinfall on that one, but it still didn't help. Uh, Cho KO'd the Miz, but Ryback threw Big Show out of the ring, covered the Miz, and retained the title. Honestly, it's it's probably the weakest match of the night. Um, I have no love for the women's match, which I'll get to, but you know that'll probably get a lot of votes for worst match. John Stewart went to Brock Lesnar's locker room to confront him about breaking the streak. Um, thankfully for John, Paul Heyman answered the door instead. Stewart cut a promo saying that wrestling fans weren't happy when Brock broke the streak, cutting a promo on behalf of every fan who complained about WrestleMania 30. Heyman laughed and replied by singing Glory, Glory, Barack Lesnar and made a comment about how he guessed WWE couldn't get David Letterman for this. Um, I should point out, they said the dreaded W word, uh, wrestling, like, three or four times tonight. So, I don't know if they're, you know, get, uh, not giving up, but, you know, uh, if they're being more lax with the word wrestling than before. But, uh, you know, they've been saying it a lot more often than they used to. Um, especially Corey Graves twice on the Raw, or on, not the Raw pre-show, but the pay-per-view pre-show saying that the Sasha Banks uh Bailey match was the best women's wrestling match he'd seen in a long time. We then got two thirds of the Shield versus two thirds of the Wyatt family. Um Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper. If you recall earlier this year, Ambrose and Harper went fifty six minutes in a Falls Count Anywhere match at Extreme Rules. Of course the asterisk on that is you know, they jumped in a car after five minutes, drove around Chicago, came back, and wrestled another five minutes after. But hey, don't let that get in the way of a good story. They went 56 minutes. Um, this match was quite reminiscent of a Shield match. Um, and if you recall, they did a lot They did a lot of Shield Wyatt six-man tags early last year. And this was quite similar to those. Um, it was a four-way brawl all over God's creation, um, which is what started the match. And somehow, despite everyone brawling all over the place for well over a minute, the referee count got his count all the way up to three by the time they got back in the ring. Um, at one point early on in the match, Ambrose ran down all three announce tables to leap at Bray, who was on the other side of the barrier. Uh, the best part of that was one of the Spanish announcers was literally crawling over the barricade uh, on the other end, get away from it all. Um, so much was going on, it was hard to keep track of. Uh, Roman Reigns got knocked down, and I honestly don't even know how he got knocked down. So Ambrose was going two-on-one for most of the match. Um, Wyatt, at one point, did the Randy Orton draping DDT spot, but instead of doing it how Randy does it in the ring, they did it while he was standing on the floor, and Ambrose... Meanwhile, was still dangling off the middle ropes. So that looked brutal. Um, Roman Reigns was down for so long that the fans chanted Roman sleeping, uh, which is actually when Roman finally woke up and got up onto the apron. Uh, Roman, I would say in normal situations, Roman got the hot tag, except he got booed the whole time while getting the hot tag. Uh, the fans booed everything he did and were quite angry when he kicked out of the Luke Harper Batista bomb. Um, the Wyatts went for a spike pile driver, but Roman fought out of it. Uh, the faces almost went to Doomsday Device, at Doomsday Device, excuse me, and then hit a two-man version of the Shields triple power bomb. Um, and the announcers never mentioned uh, that that's what they were doing. Uh, Roman eventually pinned Bray Wyatt of all people with the spear, which ironically was the only thing that fans cheered for when was when Roman hit the spear. I don't get it. I really don't. You know, it's not like everyone hates Cena, but it's not like they pop when Cena hits the AA. 
Speaking of John Cena, winner takes all, title for title, WWE Champion Seth Rollins versus U.S. Champion John Cena. Uh, Rollins traded in the black leather outfit for a white leather outfit. You know what they say about people who wear white. They're the good guys. Um, the first spot of the match was Rollins doing the jumping knee but to the back of Cena. I like to point out that did not break Cena's back. Um, followed by two suicide dives from Rollins. Followed by the flipping cannonball dive over the top. They were already teasing finishers five minutes into the match. Um, with Cena hit a horrendous looking springboard stunner. Rollins hit a running shooting star press, and despite Neville using that move in almost every match he has, the announcers played it as never seeing that move before. Um, Rollins kicked out of the first AA and then kicked out of a bunch of moves that Cena has never won a match with, which somehow still caused the announcers to freak out. At one point, they attempted to do a sunset flip powerbomb, but they messed it up horribly. Uh, Rollins hit a frog splash. And then did the spot that Cena always does, where uh, uh, Cena now gave uh, Rollins a flying body press. But Rollins rolled through, hurt Cena up onto his shoulders, and hit him with the AA. Cena kicked out. Um, Roll- or, I'm sorry, Cena won- at one point locked on the STF, but Rollins got the ropes and went for the pedigree. Cena swept the legs and locked on the... Best figure four of the night. Sadly, Charlotte did the worst figure four. We'll get to that. But Cena put on the better of the two figure fours. I point out that Ric Flair almost never won with the figure four. So Cena didn't win here either with it. Um, Rollins hit a superplex that he rolled through and turned it into a Michinoku driver once they landed. That didn't. That wasn't it. Uh, Rollins missed a Phoenix Splash. And Cena hit the AA, but as he was picking him up, Rollins kicked the referee in the head, and down he went. Rollins hit the nosebreaker, but to the side of the head, but they sold it like he kneed Cena in the face. When down ran Jon Stewart, of all people. Jon Stewart ran down with a chair, and somehow, and when you saw it, you knew what was about to happen, but you didn't believe what was going to happen. Because it made absolutely no sense. He didn't, like, it. basically no. He, John Stewart was not running down there with a chair to hit John Cena with it. But alas, he went down there and hit John Cena with a chair. John Stewart turned heel on John Cena. Of course, the fans exploded because, you know, even though he basically just turned heel, the fans still were... Yay, Cena's about to lose! And yes, Cena was about to lose. Rollins hit the pedigree on the chair. The ref woke up, rolled in, counted to three, and Seth Rollins is a double champion. Seth Rollins is the WWE champion. Seth Rollins is the United States champion. They never even teased Sheamus running in to cash in. Um, I, they, they were talking too much about Sheamus doing it to make me think they were actually going to go through with it. Because, you know, WWE, when they want, uh, when they're going to have him cash in, they never mention it for, like, weeks beforehand. And that was, uh, the halfway point of the show. Um, yeah, six matches in the first two hours and about 15, 20 minutes. By the way, Cena Rollins, um... It could have been better, but it was still the best match on the show. Like if, like the first three or four minutes were kind of clunky, um, and if they were a little better, if the beginning of that match was better, this could have been high four stars, I think. But the way it was, it's probably three and a half, three and three quarter stars, and still the best match on the show, probably. Um, if the Wyatts and the Shield had longer, that would have been the best match, but they didn't, so this is going to win it by default, I think. Um, after this, we went to a commercial over what's coming to the WWE Network of this fall. It included WWE Breaking Ground, which is a new show looking inside the Performance Center. 
Uh, we're going to have a Stone Cold podcast with Edge and Christian. The final episodes of Swerved. Uh, WWE 24 uh, episode looking at NXT, which I'm not sure how different that's going to be from Breaking Ground. And on October 3rd, they're going to do the uh, Madison Square Garden house show that Brock Lesnar is going to be sports entertaining at. So I wonder which member of the New Day is going to get a whooping on October 3 in MSG. Team PCB, Team Bella, Team Bad, three-team elimination match. Last night, Sasha Banks had a four-plus star match with Bailey that went over 16 minutes and had the fans jumping. This match was not that. Dave Meltzer liked this match a whole lot more than I did. Personally, I hated it. And, uh, yeah. The fans reacted to Sasha like she was a star when she tagged in, and they didn't care as soon as she tagged out. Tamina got a lot of offense early on, so that tells you everything you need to know about the quality of the match. Um, They were supposed to tag in and out, but especially before that first fall, uh, they would just periodically break down into a nine-way brawl just for the heck of it. They got the big dive sequence that everyone did a giant dive. And honestly, outside of Paige's final dive on top of the pile, I don't remember who did what, unlike, you know, last night at TakeOver, when I could tell you every top rope move that either Sasha or Bailey did. Um, let's see here. After the giant dive sequence, Brie rolled Tamina in, hit her with the X-Factor, and eliminated her first. The fans were not happy because that meant Sasha was going to go away. Nikki almost immediately pinned Becky with a rack attack, but that was broken up. Um, They then got the heat on uh, Paige. They gave her the Alabama slam on the floor, which was teased as a count out, but Paige got in. I want to point out, Nikki isn't terrible, um, but she should not have been in the ring as much as she was. Um... Bree did a series of Daniel Bryan kicks. Alicia Fox was in this match very little. Um, and when she was in, she actually, the first thing she did was she almost dropped Paige on top of her head with the Northern Lights suplex. Charlotte got the hot tag, which did wake the fans up. And she messed up the figure four when she went for it on Alicia. Uh, she's been doing that move for well over a year. Now she messes it up. Um, Charlotte and Alicia booted each other in the face. Paige and Nikki tackled each other out of the ring, and Becky pinned Brie with a pump handle slam. I cannot stress enough just how, not how bad this match was, but just, you know, the level this match went down to, especially in comparison to the match last night. Kevin Owens versus Cesaro. These two men fought from the bell, just hitting chops and punches and uppercuts to each other um early on owens did a cannonball dive over the top rope began screaming at cole so cesaro did the Rey mysterio spinning dive over the top onto kevin uh both men broke out versions of the tko um owens yelled at cesaro to stay down like he did to finn balor but like with balor cesaro doesn't listen cesaro at one point did a gut wrench souple from the middle rope Um, which was quite impressive. Owens did a springboard Tornado DDT that looked a lot better than Cena's springboard Stunner. Cesaro rolled out of the way when Owens went for a springboard Moonsault, but he did get his head knocked off when Owens super kicked him in the face. Um, Cesaro uh, screwed his head back on, and we had a European uppercut party, uh, culminating with Cesaro running halfway around the ring to do an uppercut to Owens outside. Uh, Owens, the finish saw Owens go for his fisherman buster from the middle rope, but Cesaro got down and hit a beautiful drop kick to the mush. He then went up to the ropes and went to do something, but Owens crotched him on the top rope. Owens hit his fisherman's buster and the pop up power bomb, and Kevin Owens broke his losing streak at four big show matches in a row by pinning Cesaro. Night of Champions is in four weeks. Uh, does Roll- Will Rollins wrestle twice? Probably not. I think, you know, if he keeps the U.S. title, he- they'll probably just do him and Cena for both belts. 
I think there's a chance he just vacates it. Um, and personally, I hope they do an NXT title match, but I think that's wishful thinking. Um, finally, in the main event, I don't know what to say on this one. Um, Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. Um, controversy reigns supreme at SummerSlam, dog. Undertaker, uh, Lesnar attacked him before the bell even rang. Undertaker got in the ring and still had his jacket on when Lesnar attacked him. Undertaker fought back and sent Brock to the outside. Uh, I pointed out that as soon as Brock got in the ring, Charles Robinson couldn't ring the bell fast enough to get it started. Uh, we got dueling chants of Undertaker in Suplex City. Taker went for old school, but Lesnar yanked him down into the F5 position. Undertaker got out of it and went for a choke slam, but Lesnar got out of that. And that's when the, sup- uh, the suplexes started. We got one suplex. We got a second suplex. But Taker fought back and hit both Snake Eyes and the Big Boot. Uh, somewhere in here, Lesnar got cut open over the bridge of his nose. Um, Taker went for a choke slam and got uh, caught from behind. And Lesnar hit a third suplex. And a fourth suplex. And a fifth suplex. And Undertaker decided, screw this suplex shit, and rolled outside the ring. Um, they reversed each other's finishers on the floor, uh, but then Brock gave Taker an F5 through the German announce table. Um, Taker barely got back into the ring before 10, which is when I noted about how it felt like years ago that Dolph Ziggler and Rusev wrestled. Uh, Lesnar at one point screamed that, he's, that he'll kill The Undertaker, and that's when Taker stood up and told him you'll have to, hitting both a choke slam and a tombstone, but Lesnar kicked out. Undertaker then kicked out of um, an F5. No one believed that was the finish. Uh, drawing an amazing similarity to WrestleMania 30, by the way. And I should point out, they didn't think the choke slam and tombstone the first one was either. And uh, that was actually the only tombstone Undertaker used in the entire match, actually. But it made me think of WrestleMania 30 in that no one believed any of those moves were the finish when they happened. Uh, Lesnar did hit two more F5s for a total of three. Um, Undertaker kicked out both times. For what it's worth, it took three F5s to take out Undertaker at WrestleMania. Of course, no announcer brought that up. Uh, Taker got on Hell's Gate, but Lesnar got out of it and put on the Kimura. And this is when the shenanigans happened. And it became very confusing and looked like a total mess up. Except, you know, it was to play into the storyline. Uh, Brock had Undertaker in the Kimura, and the announcer started screaming that Brock's shoulders were down. So the referee counted, and when he counted one, uh, what happened was he counted one, and Undertaker began tapping out. He was tapping Brock's uh, leg, I believe. However, Charles Robinson, the referee, was on the other side of the pile, so he couldn't see Undertaker tapping out. Now, the timekeeper did see Undertaker tapping out, and he rang the, the bell. And that's when Paul Heyman got in the ring. They did. They basically did the WrestleMania 30 celebration at first. That uh, take that uh, Paul Heyman got into the ring and bowed down and yelled, "Oh my God," etc. But it wasn't the finish. Um, Charles Robbins screamed at the uh, the timekeeper that only he uh, rings the bell or announces to ring the bell. And uh, Undertaker realized what was going on and kicked. Brock Lesnar in the balls for the third time and locked on Hell's Gate because the match was still continuing and uh, they did the Steve Austin Bret Hart finish complete with Brock wearing the crimson mask kind of Um, Taker locked on the Hell's Gate Brock flipped off Undertaker and passed out and they called the match so Undertaker beat Brock Lesnar technically by submission uh, although I I consider that as much of a submission as when Rusev uh, made Cena pass out to the accolade, but still. A very anticlimactic finish. Fans were booing it. Uh, Obviously, this is going to set up the third match, probably at WrestleMania 32. Um, And yeah, after the match, when they showed a dozen replays, and showed it was quite obvious that Undertaker tapped out, because that was part of the problem, is that Everything happened so fast, 
that, and it was so confusing that it just looked like it was a total mess up that the uh, timekeeper rang the bell and he couldn't really see, did Undertaker really tap out? Um, but uh, yeah, that's what happened. John McCarthy would have been in the right position to call that match, but he wasn't the referee. Charles Robinson was. After the match, Undertaker got up and left. Paul Heyman got on the mic afterwards and declared Brock the winner via tap out. And the fans went home. I don't want to say unhappy, but, you know, they've been happier. They were happier after TakeOver, I'll tell you that. So, as a show, how was SummerSlam? Um, it was better than last year's SummerSlam with Brock and Cena. It wasn't as good as 2013, which had those two four-plus-star matches with Brian versus Cena and uh, Punk versus Lesnar. But also, I mean, SummerSlam has been very weak in recent years. Like, this was better than going back years. Uh, 2012 with Triple H and Brock was better than that one. Um, 2011 with Cena and Punk for the Undisputed title is better than that. Um, I think 2008 would probably be the last SummerSlam that was better than this one, except for 2013. Uh, if you hey, take away 2013, this was better than every one since uh, then. But uh, ultimately, it was not the same level of TakeOver. I don't know what happened to that crowd from TakeOver, but they did not show up at uh, SummerSlam because the crowd, while not dead most of the night, the crowd was not as responsive to as much as they were at TakeOver. And it might be because it was four hours. I just think, you know, the show, NXT was a better show all around in comparison to SummerSlam. And it seemed like so many matches at SummerSlam could have been better than they were. I think Brock and Taker was probably the best Brock Lesnar Undertaker match you're going to get. Uh, besides the crappy finish. But uh, everything else was kind of, you know, we've seen them all do better. You know. But I guess that's it. So um, I'm by myself, so I guess there's not a whole lot else for me to say or do here. So I'm going to wrap things up. Um, after tonight, we are going to be back Wednesday night with Clash of the Champions 25. Hopefully Brian's back and has watched the show that night. Um, and it will be a full show on Wednesday. So take care. Thank you for listening. And adios from the great state of Massachusetts. You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network.